Hello, in this tutorial we're going to actually improve our HUD and perform the calculations for the frames per second. This will give us some good practice doing arithmetic and the math within our program and it'll also allow us the ability to use the stopwatch class that's built into the framework that we have here. So the first thing we need to do in order to use the stopwatch is include the using system.diagnostics and what this will do is it'll give us the ability to mess with the stopwatch class. What we're going to do is we're going to create a private static stopwatch and I'm going to call this the clock. Now in our initialize down here we're going to actually create a new clock is equal to a new stopwatch and then the next thing we need to do is actually start the clock. Okay, so we're going to create a stopwatch object called clock, and then in our initialize, we're gonna create clock to be equal to a new stopwatch, and then the clock isn't running unless we tell it to start. So I'm gonna say clock.start at the beginning of the initialize, and what I'd like to do is inside of my main game loop, I want to maintain how long it's taking to run each one of these game loops, and in doing that, I'm gonna create this notion of how much time has transpired since the last time update and render was run. Okay, in order to do that I'm going to need a couple more variables here. I'm going to create a private static long and long is like an integer except it just has more memory so it can hold a larger range of numbers. Okay, So we'll have this long variable called start time. Not surprisingly I'm going to need a long variable called stop time and I'll do the delta between these to figure out how much time has transpired. So I'll have a long called time delta. Okay, so I have my start time, my stop time, and my time delta. And in my main game loop, what I'm going to do is say that the start time is equal to clock dot elapsed milliseconds. And what this is going to do is it's going to take how much time has transpired since the clock was started. Okay, And then at the end of my main game loop I'm going to say that the stop time is equal to the clock dot elapsed milliseconds. And then I can just perform a simple differential between these and say that the time delta is equal to the stop time minus the start time. So now I have a variable called time delta that tells me how long did it take to go from the start time to the stop time, meaning how long did it take to check all the events and run update and update and, and run render. So time delta is going to tell me how long this loop took to run. Now this is going to be really important to us because later as we develop our game we're going to want to know how much time has transpired and we're going to keep track so that we know how often the player should be able to fire his missiles and how often new ships, new enemies should be coming at us. So the ability to know how much time has transpired is really important for a lot of things in our game. Now I'm going to actually perform the calculations of the frames per second based on this. And so in my update method I'm going to add to the HUD I'm going to call HUD.UpdateFPS. Now this doesn't exist yet, but I'm going to pass this time delta to a function called UpdateFPS, and we'll write this here in a second. And it's going to take how much time has transpired, and it's going to update a counter and figure out how many frames we're rendering per second. Okay, nothing else needs to change here in our main program. So what we've done is we've created a clock, We've created a start and a stop time and then that time delta. We have calculated the elapsed milliseconds at the beginning of our loop and saved that in the start time. And then we calculate the elapsed milliseconds of the clock at the end of our loop and we call that stop time. And then we do a simple difference between those, subtracting start time from stop time to give us how many milliseconds have, have transpired since this entire loop has gone. I'm going to pass that into my update FPS and we'll use that time delta in a few places later in our game as well. So let's jump into the HUD and update it now. Now remember we have this update FPS function that we have to write. So let's go down here and actually create that. It needs to be public because we want to be able to invoke it from the main program. It's not going to return anything 
update FT FPS, and it's taking in this long variable that I'll call time delta. Okay, so here's our function. Now what I wanna do is track how much time has run total. So every time you update the FPS and you pass me this time delta, I'd like to update a variable that I'm gonna maintain locally inside of my HUD. So I'm gonna create a private long, and it's private because I don't want anybody outside the HUD to be able to get access to this. And I'm gonna call it elapsed time elapsed time. Okay. In my constructor, I'm going to set elapsed time to be equal to zero. All right, so I'm setting that up to begin with. And every time you tell me to update my FPS, I'm going to set elapsed time to be increased by this time delta. Right, remember our plus equal says take this variable and increase it by this variable. So my elapsed time is going to keep going up and I'll be able to use elapsed time to know how much time has transpired since I've reset it. Okay, what I'd like to do then is to say every second, so in the update FPS, a new time comes in, a new time delta comes in, and I'm gonna increase elapsed time by that amount. I'm gonna keep doing this over and over and over again. So I'd like to say if the elapsed time is greater than or equal to 1,000, so I'm, I'm measuring in milliseconds here, so if one second or more has, has gone on, then I'm gonna set the FPS text here. Right, remember, FPS is the label that I have. I'm gonna set the text of that to be frames per second equals, and I'm gonna have a variable called frame count. Now, we haven't defined this yet, but essentially what I'm gonna do is every time the render function runs, for the HUD, I'm going to tell this frame counter to go up by one, meaning every time you display the game, I'm going to increase the frame count. And if at least a second has gone by, then I'm going to display this. I'm going to show how many frames have gone by. Right. So here in render, every time you render this, I'm going to increase this frame count by one. And then ultimately, after a second has gone by, I'm going to say how many, t how many frames have been rendered. And that's going to be my frames per second, because one second has gone by. And if I count the number of frames that were rendered, then I know how many frames were rendered in that one second. I also need to remember to reset my frame count to be equal to zero, because if I've counted my frames and I've now displayed them after a second has gone by, I need to make sure I reset frame count to be zero. And I need to say that my elapsed time should go down by 1,000 because I know a second has gone by. I'm going to take away a second off of this elapsed time. Now, you could reset this to zero. You're going to get a small mathematical error there if you do. But you could just say elapsed time equals zero. Or if elapsed time was slightly more than 1,000, then I'd like to figure out how many, you know, leave that, that small amount that's still in there. Okay, so if you tell me to update the frames per second, I'm going to take in this time, I'm going to increase my elapsed time by how much time has gone by, and if a second has gone by, I'm going to display the new frame rate, I'm going to reset frame count to be zero, and then I'm going to take my elapsed time down so that I'm waiting another second as this thing loops again. If you tell me to render the HUD, not only do I render the UI system, but I'm going to increase this frame counter because I'm actually doing a rendering, and the only thing that's left then is to add this frame count as a variable into my HUD. So now I have this frame count or frame counter. Uh, what do we call it? We call it a frame count, okay? So we've got frame count. Frame count is being increased every time we display. And then I'm gonna display it here, uh, updating that, that labels text if, if a second has gone by. And the last thing I need to do is just say frame count, initialize that off to zero. And now if we run this, what we should get is the main application is going to, every time in our game loop, it's going to be tracking how much time has passed. It's going to calculate that time delta. And here in the update, it's going to update the frames per second using that. So every time we run through that main game loop, it's going to tell the HUD to update itself and the update frames per second is going to keep track of how much time has passed. As soon as that gets to a second or more, it's going to display the frame rate for us, and every time we tell the HUD to render itself, it's going to increase that frame count. So let's run this now and see what we get. Okay, you see our frame rate, uh, we've got FPS to be about uh, 30 here.
okay, running along and it's fluctuating a little bit as we go. Right? Depending upon your system and the processing speed, you, you might be getting more than that, you might be getting less than that. Uh, you should get between uh, 30 and 60 depending. And of course, if you were to actually deploy this to the Vita, that hardware would be slightly different, so you're going to get a different rate there as well. Okay, so this is just a way of keeping track of how many frames we're rendering per second. And the way we pulled that off is by doing the calculation here using a clock, starting that in initialize, and, and don't forget to actually start the clock. And then we can ask it how much time has passed at the beginning at the end of my main game loop, figure out the delta between those two, and then when I run my update for my main game, I'm gonna pass how much time has passed to that HUD's update FPS function. That's going to increase the elapsed time that the HUD is maintaining itself, and as soon as we've gone a second, it's going to display how many frame counts have gone. Right? The frame counter should be created here, and every time you render, you should increase that frame count. Okay, so watch what would happen this is actually not correct, right, because uh, we're only rendering one frame, but what would happen if I increased frame count by two here? So frame count plus equal two, and if I run that, then I should effectively get a frames per second that is double. Now, that's kind of cheating. Don't think that the frame rate is actually increased. It's because we're actually increasing our frame count incorrectly by two. So if I put this back down, that's actually an authentic and correct count of the number of frames that are being rendered. So the takeaway from this video is we can use our stopwatch class that I called clock. We can start that clock after creating a new one, and then we can ask it how much time has transpired. And this is going to be very important to us later as we figure out how often a new enemy ship should be created or how often the user should be able to fire his missile. Then we updated the HUD to actually display that frames per second rate every second.